Hey friend, I'm so excited about this video. In this video, I'm gonna give you 10 tips to instantly improve your watercolor. So if you're like, man, I'm bumming about the results I'm getting, they're not like the teacher, they're not like this image or this YouTube video, apply these 10 tips and I'm sure they will wildly improve your watercolor results. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, my first tip is paper. Paper is so important. It's one of the more important, all of having all good supplies is a really important thing. If you wanna see good results, investing in some good uh, supplies that you love, you're gonna see a huge improvement. But paper is one of the number one ways that you can improve your watercolor instantly when it comes to uh, blending and mixing with wet and wet, uh, the saturation and the density of your colors is gonna look, oftentimes look really muted and um, lame, honestly, if it's on uh, sad, cheap watercolor paper. So I use Legion's Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press Paper. It is 100% cotton. It's a really um, accessible price point for the quality that it is. I used to always use Fabriano or Arche or Arches, however you wanna say it, um, but they're really expensive papers and this is the same quality and much cheaper um, price point wise, but it is so high quality and good. So you can easily do some color lifting. Your colors are gonna look vibrant and rich on this paper. They're not gonna be dull or um, muted looking, and they're also gonna blend really well. So a lot of cheaper watercolor papers, like Canson watercolor paper, for example, um, they just don't get the richness out of the pigments that you would like to see with the 100% cotton paper here. And then sometimes um, cheaper papers mix too much, like wet and wet happens way too qu quickly or aggressively. Um, or the opposite happens. So certain cheap papers will give you the opposite result where the blending with wet and wet is just way too aggressive um, or some other cheaper papers, the wet and wet ability will be non-existent. And so having a really good paper is going to help you improve your technical skills, but then also give you the better results that you're looking for when you're looking at reference photos or you're looking at a tutorial online by a professional, etc. So if you want a whole video on the supplies I use and why I'm gonna to link to a video that you can check out on our channel on supplies. But next tip, tip number two for instantly improving your watercolor is those hard lines. So hard lines are, especially if you're painting a loose style floral or floral watercolor or loose style landscape or whatever, um, hard lines are an easy way. In some areas, it's totally appropriate, appropriate to have hard lines. Like if you're adding detail to something um, or you're painting a building and you wanna show edges or fine details, etc. However, if you want the overall look to look more whimsical, more loose, etc., cetera, um, try avoiding hard lines as much as you possibly can because that is something that's going to stand out. It's an edge. It creates a, a more saturated and more dense area of color that's just not gonna fit with the rest of your piece. And so what will help you with avoiding hard lines is making sure that you're, while you're painting with watercolor, watching how your stuff is drying. If you see something that's creating a hard line, just grab a wet brush, just water on it, do a little, um, you know how you brush your teeth and you do those cir circular motions. You can do that on your hard line to lift some of that color off and grab a dry paper towel and lift that off. Or just watch while it's still wet, while your color is still wet. Anything that has a puddle, which is gonna be my third tip, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but anything that has a puddle on your paper is going to have a hard line around that puddle because the water pushes the pigments uh, the actual granulated pigment to the edge of that puddle. And so it saturate, saturate, saturates the edge of that puddle, creating a hard line or a ring around that puddle. So my second and third tip go hand in hand with each other. Second tip was avoid hard lines when you're trying to paint a more whimsical, loose piece. Avoid them unless you're obviously adding detail. Third tip is water control. 
So many newbies, so many beginners struggle with having the appropriate amount of water on their brush all the time. So many of um, people that I see, you know, learning watercolor grab way too much water with their brush. They're going in their water cup and they're just going straight to their paper with drips of water coming off their brush. Unless you're doing a huge like petal or a huge swatch or some sky or something like that, you don't need that much water. And if you do have that much water and you're gonna paint an area that's an inch in size on your paper or something like that, it's gonna create a puddle, which is going to create hard lines and those weird rings around certain areas, like the tips of your leaf or whatever. Um, it's also going to separate, if you're mixing colors together, it's also going to separate some of your colors. So for example, Lemon Yellow Deep is a really dense color, um, whereas Opera Rose is much lighter than Lemon Yellow Deep. So if you're mixing Lemon Yellow Deep with Opera Rose, if you have too much water in your mixture, Opera Rose is gonna lift to the top and you're gonna see this like dusty pink stuff on top. So try, it takes balance, it takes a lot of practice, but try to remember to always swipe your water cup off on the edge and it, just go off of feel. If something looks like it's literally a puddle on your paper, grab a dry paper towel, soak up that puddle a little bit so it doesn't dry all funky. And then my fourth tip, that was three, right? Yeah, my fourth tip is to have two water cups. I use two water cups for when I'm rinsing off a warm color and when I'm rinsing off my cool colors like greens and blues, etc. Um, so that I don't mix contrasting colors together, creating brown, muddy water. Some artists use a clean cup of water and a dirty cup of water. However makes sense, most sense to you is totally up to you, but I highly recommend with watercolor, since you're using water all the time when you're painting, that you have those separated or you have one cup of water that stays clean the whole time and you rinse off all your colors in the other cup of water so that you're never adding brown or muddiness to your pigments when you grab and mix new colors. And then next tip, brushes, brushes, brushes. I am a huge fan of Princeton Heritage 4050 brushes. You guys know that if you've watched any number of videos on this channel, they're all I use. Again, check out that supply video if you wanna know why. Um, I'm also a huge fan in synthetic brushes because no harm done to animals and they're also way less expensive. However, Br Princeton, I have no idea how they, how they did it, how they've done it, but they have created this technology in their brush that literally is the most flexible, snappy, absorbent, all the things you want when it comes to watercolor brush. Um, so the Heritage 4050 brush, I love, they also have a, an Aqua Elite brush that holds a lot of water so you don't have to constantly be dipping and um, grabbing new water and pigment. Um, but the main goal that I like to achieve in the style watercolor that I paint is flexibility and snappiness. And so I don't wanna be working with a flat or a floppy wet mop type of brush. Some watercolorists love those brushes when they're working, but me personally, um, I love a snappy flexible brush. So if I'm putting pressure on a brush, it's going to snap right back into its original form, et cetera, because it's so flexible. I like painting that way, but my recommendation or my fifth tip to you is to find a brush that you adore, that soaks up and absorbs water and is also gonna retain its form if that's something that lends to your style. So find a good brush. I recommend Princeton round brushes, Princeton series 4050s brushes. Next tip, choose or purchase or whatever pigments that inspire you. Just because an artist you follow loves and recommends certain colors doesn't mean that it's gonna be your thing. Um, obviously all the colors I recommend are incredibly high quality, but some people like to work with more traditional colors or more muted colors and less vibrant colors. So think about your style, think about what overall inspires you. I'm assuming since you're watching this video, the colors that I use inspire you, but you never know. Think about what actually inspires you. That's gonna make you wanna paint more. And so if you're just painting in somebody else's style or referencing somebody else's colors that, they, that inspire them and they're not really inspiring to you, then it might be some sort of subconscious happening some subconscious happening, that's not even a phrase. Something subconscious is happening to telling you that you're just not clicking it with it and you don't really know why, it could be the colors that you're working with. So maybe mix up some more muted colors with the colors that you have or buy more colors that are something more inspiring to you. 
Overall though, all the supplies I use, you're going to see a huge improvement in your watercolor skills and um, end result when you're working with high quality supplies. The quality of your supplies makes a huge difference in your results. It's gonna make you wanna practice more because you're seeing better results than you know if you used crappy paper and the, uh, it wasn't blending properly or your brush just was hard to work with or your pigments weren't blending, etc. So working with high quality supplies is first step, um, foundational thing to elevate your watercolor skills and results. So with that out of the way, the next tip I have, tip number six, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Tip number seven is to embrace the accidents. So as Bob Ross says, we're all fans of Bob Ross, um, happy accidents happen. And our accidents happen and what, pfft, Man, Bob Ross did it better than me. Um, embrace those accidents because you never know when they can turn into a happy accident. There you go. So um, obviously there's a time to call it quits, but there are so there's so much quality to watercolor that lends really well if you're able to be loose and go with the flow and let those colors blend together and see what happens and maybe continue to work with it even though you don't like it for the first little bit. Just see how it evolves over time. Um, so embrace those accidents. They can be really, really fun to look at later on, but then also uh, provide a surprise element to your piece that you wouldn't have seen otherwise if you're just being really, really precise and type A about it. Tip number eight, study color theory. When I started taking color theory really seriously in my practice, that's when composition, um, overall my work just completely transformed and took off and I was able to sit down and paint with more confidence. So a lot of artists and creatives struggle with overthinking and knowing where to place what, when, <laughs> um, and color theory informs pretty much every decision that I make on paper. And so if you want more information on color mixing and color theory, make sure you check out our color chart video tutorial. That was super informative. That exercise is transformational to how you paint. My ninth tip is to break everything you paint down into shapes. If you've worked through any of my books, Everyday Watercolor and Everyday Watercolor Florals, you know that my background is in sketching and drawing. Um, I used to doodle all the time and I started off with doodling and drawing in journals and in notebooks, etc. And that informs how I paint. And the main reason for that is that everything you paint can be broken down into basic, basic, basic shapes basic shapes. So a floral can be a sphere, a cone shape, a star shape, etc. A toucan, its head can be a circle mixed with a C curve and then a straight line. And so there are so, everything you paint can be broken down into basic shapes. And so if you're able to do that internally in your mind as you're painting, it makes um, painting so much easier. And so if you haven't checked out my books yet, that is going to help train your mind into breaking these things down into basic shapes for you if you need help with that. But breaking things down, whatever you're painting, landscapes, animals, portraits, florals, whatever it is, can be broken down into basic shapes and make it way easier for you to improve your watercolor skills. And then my final tip is to have dry paper towels on hand um, while you're painting. This beautiful, you know, or a cloth or a Q-tip, something that is dry and like, you know, material, whatever, can soak, soak up some water and pigment. So like I said earlier, if you have puddles of paint and water on your paper, that's gonna create hard lines that you might maybe don't want. So using a paper towel to soak it up. Um, and then also color lifting. When you're painting more realistically and you wanna add texture or you wanna diffuse a color more and make it lighter, use your paper towel and actually create texture on your painting with the texture of your paper towel or create lines um, where you've picked up uh, color lines and petals or details and petals with a q-tip or with a paper towel that's you know scrunched up real tight like this um, so having a dry paper towel on hand you should have anyways when you're drying off your brushes and all of that but just use it if you've never used it before while you're painting you might be surprised with the results you can get from lifting color or adding texture to a piece, etc. So those are our 10 tips that I have for you to instantly improve your watercolor. As always, have fun, stay loose, don't judge yourself, 
even if it's a mistake and you end up throwing it in the trash or whatever, don't think of it as a mistake. Think of it as a lesson learned and a lesson in improving your skills, improving your muscle memory, etc. But those 10 tips should help you get you on your way to instantly improving your watercolor. I hope you loved this video. Please comment below with your favorite tip that I mentioned in this video, or if I didn't mention a tip in this video that you love, I would love to learn from you. So let me know in the comments below what one of your favorite tips for watercolor for instantly improving your watercolor is in the comment section below. I can't wait to read your comments. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.